What's going on, Print Fam? In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the basics of separating art for screen printing in Adobe Illustrator. Let's rock and roll. All right, now a few things you're gonna need to follow along with this tutorial are an art file, preferably in vector format, and Adobe Illustrator. And I'm gonna show you how to set up a workspace specifically for color separations. So this is about as empty of a desktop as you can possibly get. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go to workspaces and we're gonna go new workspace. And I'm gonna call this sep workspace. We're gonna come back up to Windows and we're gonna turn some of the most important things on. Let's just go right down the list from the A's to the Z's. So we're gonna start with uh, a line. I think a line is important to have this thing up. Don't need transform. And then also Pathfinder. I think that these two are fairly important. But what I like to do, man, I hate tabs. I just like to have everything open all the time. It depends on how much uh, desktop space that you have. Uh, the next thing we're gonna go to is attributes. The attributes is a very important for uh, color separation specifically. So we're gonna bring attributes over and I'm gonna set this to this side here because we can use that quite a bit. And uh, I am gonna turn libraries on and this depends on how you've set your libraries up. I have created a library called Screen Print Assets and in this I went through and created spot colors of all of my main uh, Wilflex stock ink, ink colors. So I just have this open all the time so I have quick access to spot colors. So I'm gonna keep my libraries open as well. We're also gonna be looking for separations preview. We're gonna turn that on, and I'm gonna click this and drag this over here directly underneath attributes. And I'm gonna close this. And we're going to look for swatches. We're gonna turn swatches on. We can put this on top like that. So we have our swatches. I'm gonna also turn on stroke. So I'm gonna put the stroke here as well. And put that right above this, just like that. So we have a line, pathfinder, we have swatches. I mean, we can even, uh, do one different. I'm gonna take Pathfinder down here, like that, and uh, a line as well. You know what? I'll keep a line here. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open layers. Uh, right here, free and clear. We have all of our main actions right here, and then we have our align feature here. The next thing I'm gonna do is because I'm creating like a workspace, uh, with specific swatches, I'm gonna come through and delete every single CMYK swatch in this thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, to highlight everything, you just come to the first color, which is white, and then you hold shift, and then you can just click them all at once, grab them, and drag them over to the trash can, and now this is empty. This is a, a good desktop for color separating. All right, one necessary step to the perfect separation is your gorgeous dog must be directly in front of your keyboard and mouse, thus creating a situation where you can barely separate. That's the trick. If you have this going down, Separations are easy. All right, now we're ready to start separating some art files, but where do we get the art? The artwork bottleneck has been the bane of the screen printer's existence since screen printing became a thing. I wanna lay out a scenario for you. A client reaches out, you give them a quote, they like your prices, they're ready to place an order. But you find out they don't have a logo yet. And your heart sinks because you know you're going to be up for the next two days, drafting up a logo in Illustrator, submitting it to the client, getting a revision, getting an approval, blah, 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 goes on and on and on. It can go on for weeks. What if I told you I have found a tool that helps me generate logos and t-shirt graphics for my clients in less than five minutes? Hey, you'd lose your shit, right? Well, guess what? I found the tool. Placeit.net is an online design tool that helps you generate anything, mockups for your website, uh, t-shirt mockups for your clients. You can generate uh, t-shirt graphics and the cream of the crop. And the thing that I use most is the ability to design logos in less than five minutes for your clients on the spot. Placeit.net has become my go-to tool for creating graphics for my clients. I had been using it so frequently that I reached out to them, told them I was gonna make this video, and they, they gave me an affiliate link. So if you follow the link in the description of this video, they're gonna give you, uh, I think it was 10 or 15% off when you sign up with them and start using their service. You're probably gonna pay less for it than I do monthly, which is bullshit, actually. 
And also by following the link, you're helping this channel. And as you know, it means a lot to me when you help me out because I need all the help that I can get. It's time to open this file up in Adobe Illustrator and start separating it. My goal is to give you a firm understanding of how Illustrator works in regards to spot colors and separations and all this stuff. So I'll move as quickly as possible, but this part could take a little bit of time. And at the end of this section, I do have a very specific question for any of you that are experienced in Adobe Illustrator. So make sure to pop into the comments and let me know. And uh, this is just a habit that I've always gotten into. And I, I think I would suggest that you probably do the same thing. Uh, and that is to just start separating right from your registration template if you're working in Illustrator. This is one less thing you gotta do later. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm, I'm gonna copy it off of my original artboard and I'm just gonna paste it into uh, my registration template. There's a million different ways to set up a reg template. There is no one size fits all, depends on what you need it to do. All right, so let's start separating this turd. I'm gonna delete this background, don't need it right now. I'm also going to select this whole thing and just get it scaled kind of where I want it to be. I'm gonna open my transform tab real quick just so I can see how wide it is. So it's about 10 inches wide, which works just fine for me for the for this whole thing. What you're gonna find with any graphic that you open or that you download or that a client gives you is there's always gonna be something funky with it. So the first order of business is just to sort of figure out what's happening with it and start separating it into a, a, something some kind of way that makes sense to you so i'm looking at this and i can tell a lot of the black here like these are all the letters uh, i'm gonna put them on their own layer and right now what i'm gonna do is try to get all the black in the graphic and put it on its own top layer here uh, i can also tell that this which looks like this is the outline yeah that also is gonna go up here in the black layer and then there's something funky going on with this group looks like it's a clipping mask so i'm gonna hit Control shift g and voila when I ungrouped it, you can see that there's like a transparency mask attached to that. I'm gonna delete that as well. And I'm gonna also move this up into the black layer. But like right away is something seriously, obviously wrong with this graphic, uh, which is the fact that there's just like this big splotch of black. So what I think they were doing is, let me delete that clipping mask as well. They were using like a transparency filter to give the effect of secondary colors. And we're gonna run with this, we're gonna continue this. So I'm gonna highlight this one and I'm gonna go to transparency. Yeah, see it's at 100%, but if I turn it down to like, let's say 30%, yep, see, now we have two different shades of color. We're using the black image to create the effect of a darker tan and a darker pink here. So this is really cool. This is actually a technique called overprinting where you're using a limited color palette to create the effect of different shades. Uh, so it gives us the effect like we got two, three, four more colors in here than we actually have. We have a gray, a dark tan, a dark pink, and a dark blue. So this is cool. Uh, so that's one technique you can use and that's just done by setting up transparencies. And the next thing we're gonna do is start applying our spot colors. So let's go ahead and start with the black. I'm gonna select this. Uh oh, there's more clipping masks going on here. I'm gonna use my direct selection tool and just select this stuff and I'm gonna hit delete. Yeah, see there's a bunch of clipping masks in here actually. So let's go through and see, there's one there. Let's delete that. Oh, uh, there's another one. This is the irritating thing about web graphics or just any graphic you get from somebody, you don't know how they created it. So sometimes you're gonna take a second to just get rid of any of that kind of junk. And sometimes, man, clipping masks, when you take them away, they literally destroy the graphic. Like if they did a clipping mask with a gradient fill or some shit, it can like destroy the whole graphic and it frustrates you, but you have to deal with it and recreate it. But I just wish people learned how to use certain elements of Illustrator correctly. Clipping masks should be like almost, in my opinion with Illustrator, they should just be removed from the goddamn system. You know what I mean? That's what I think. So we're, we're gonna start applying spot colors. So what happens is with a spot color is when you fill an element or a graphic with a particular spot, like for right now we have all of the black in this graphic selected, but right now it's filled with the CMYK. Act Oh yeah, we are in CMYK mode. You need to also always make sure you're working in CMYK, not RGB. But what a spot color does is tells your printer or the rip that you're using that if an element is filled with a spot color, you need to print it out on its own film. And much like when you use the registration fill right here and you fill your registration marks with it, the registration fill tells the system or your rip that you should include anything with the registration fill on every sheet. Look, notice how our swatches are empty. I'm gonna fill this with my black spot color. 
and you'll notice that it is activated because there's a white border around it but there's a on the bottom right there's a white triangle and a small black dot in the middle that indicates that you have just assigned a spot color to this image and if we come to overprint preview and turn that on and we turn off our CMYK you'll see the only and you also make sure that show only use spot colors in this and you'll see that uh, Right now, there's only one spot color, and that is black spot two, which is from my screen print assets library. So I'm gonna turn that back off. Now we're gonna come through all these colors here, and we're gonna start assigning spot colors to each one of these. So let's just work our way down. Let's start with the blue, and if you can't find it in here, just grab your direct selection tool, and come on in here and click somewhere in the image, and then you can come to select, same, fill color, and that'll make sure it gets all the blue in the element. Then we're gonna go to edit, we're gonna go edit colors and recolor artwork. Uh, from here, we're gonna come down to this little, whatever this is, it says none above it. I think there's another way to do this, but no, nah, I'm just gonna, this is the way I know how to do it. So you click this, you go to color books, and then you go solid uncoated. And what it does is it finds the closest Pantone match to your CMYK fill, which is what this thing is filled with by default. And I'm gonna hit okay, and voila, you'll see the blue, Pantone, which gives you your Pantone number, 5523 is right here. And this thing has been assigned and filled. And if you ever need to check, get your just click off it, hit A to get your direct selection tool, click on the blue area again, and if it is selected, you'll see it gets highlighted in white. There's a white border there. And then if I click the black, boom, you can see that the black is filled with black because it's got a white, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So let's go down the list and do that with the rest of these. I'm gonna go white. I have the white spot right here. I'm gonna grab this pink. I'm gonna go to uh, edit, edit colors, recolor artwork here, color books, solid panto, blah, 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 and okay. And then last but not least, the yellow, edit. Oh, let's show you another way to isolate colors. So you can also uh, just grab the magic wand and click in the middle of it, and that'll make sure it gets all of that color that's on the artboard. And we go to edit, colors, recolor artwork. Mm -hmm. There we go, and boom. Oh, there we go. That's pretty good, man. So we've literally just converted this thing into spot colors, and you can confirm that by turning on your separations preview again, uh, and it's only going to show... it. Was, so if you turn CMYK on, you'll, there's nothing really different, but I'm going to turn CMYK off, and then you can start turning colors off and on to see and make sure that everything has been filled correctly. So I'm going through the blue here, the tan... Uh, and the white, you can't see that right now, but it's good to go. So we've filled our core art file with spot colors. So if we were to print this out through our RIP right now, it would give us five films. Each film would include our registration marks up here because this is filled with registration fill. Uh, one film would show the blue and the pink and then the white. So that's the basics of separating in Adobe Illustrator right there. It's that simple. Now we're to this point, but we do need to create an underbase, right? And I've just recently created my new layer. I'm gonna call this underbase. And there's a handful of ways that you, you can go about creating an underbase. I'm gonna show you the, I'm trying to think which way I wanna show you guys, man, because there's a couple different ways we can do this. I don't, I don't wanna risk confusing you guys with overprint fill settings right now. So I'm gonna show, yeah, I'm gonna show you the most basic way, and then in another video we'll talk about. Uh, yeah, well, let's see how long this takes. Okay, so let's start just by creating a generic underbase. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab both of my my two layers that have all the artwork information. I'm gonna hit Control C. Okay, I'm gonna highlight this, and I'm gonna hit Control F, and that will paste it directly in place. I'm gonna turn my two top colors off, and I'm gonna come in here, and uh, first thing I'm gonna do just because I know I need to, is I'm gonna delete the transparency thing because that'll mess up. If you like, if you do a compound path with a transparency on, it will end up making the whole thing transparent and it kind of jacks up your underbase. So make sure you turn off any transparent layers for your base because we're gonna start combining some stuff. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come through here and I'm just gonna use my magic wand. I'm gonna select all the black in the graphic and we're gonna go compound path. And you can just come down here and do this or you can hit control eight. So we're gonna make that into a compound path. And next thing I am gonna do here is hit Control Shift G and I'm gonna ungroup all of that. So we have just, so they're not like in those weird layers like that. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine all of these colors into uh, a compound path. So I'm gonna go Control 8 and it doesn't really matter what color it turns into. 
because what we're going to do is subtract this out. So all the only areas I want to underbase are the skull and then the pink and then uh, the, the cards and then the wrench, right? So you want to, you can keep this here if you want to. Or, but what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to subtract it out from my base here. So I'm going to go highlight these two, make sure they're both compound paths. And then I'm just going to go um, down to here to my pathfinder and I'm going to do minus front. And what that does is it removes everything underneath the top object. And so now what we've done essentially is we've created a base that is only falling under the colors, right? So this is this is the basic under base. And you can even from here, you can literally with one extra step, you can turn off your top colors, okay? And let's just fill this under base with something obvious so we know we're looking at something different. You can come in, open your file, uh, and even though your file may originally have all this on, you can turn your two top colors off, you can go to file, you can go print, and then using your rip, you can just output the film for the underbase. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. Then you can turn the underbase off, you can turn these two colors on, and you can output the films for the overprint colors or for the top colors, whatever you want to call them. So that's one way you can handle it. The other way you can do this, if you don't want to have to take those two steps and you want to keep all of these layers active is something called overprint fills. And all you're doing with that is, so let's say you want to print this tan over the top of the underbase white, but you want to keep all this stuff on at the same time. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to select our tan color here, and I'm just going to select overprint fill. So now you can see if I turn the overprint preview on and then I turn the tan off that there's a slight shift. This means that this tan is also going to print the information that is underneath it, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to do that with the rest of these colors because we also want this pink. I'm going to select the pink here or I'm going to get the uh, direct selection tool or the magic wand and I'm going to select the pink color. And I'm going to also make sure to overprint fill this. And when I do that, you'll see that it, the shade kind of changes and that's just indicating that it is in fact going to print the base that's underneath it as well. We're going to also do that with the blue right here. And we're going to select overprint fill. And so now it's making sure that it's also going to print the base underneath it. And we're going to do that with the white right here. So we're going to select overprint fill one time as well. Because we have this under base, which is a bright yellow, it's really showing through, right? Like it's showing us exactly what. But just to make sure that we did in fact do it, let's just come back down here to separations preview. First, let's turn the black off. And you can see that there is happening fine. Oh, that reminds me. If you turn black off and you zoom in, you'll notice that because we don't have overprint fill on that transparent layer, it's kind of... It would ultimately knock out a little bit of halftone from the underbase. So we are going to come back into the black layer here, and we're going to make sure to overprint fill this transparent as well. And then when I do that, you'll see magically it disappears from the thing. So now it's going to be a solid white underbase, and then it's going to be a solid base of color on top of that, and then the halftone would print on top of that as well, very lightly given the effect of a second color. Turn the black back on, we turn the, the pink off, and you'll see that it just, uh, the shade is a little different. It looks orange, but we do know it's pink, but the white underneath it is going to print, and the pink will be on its own film as well. Same thing with the blue, okay, and the uh, tan as well. You can see the, the temperature is changing slightly, and if this yellow is just confusing you too much, you can turn it off, so you're looking at that correctly, uh, but then when you turn it off and you just turn yellow on, you'll see what's, what's going to show up and what's not. So I think hopefully you guys understand and you're following along so far. We're gonna go up to file, we're gonna go to the print or hit control P, either one. Make sure that your printer is AccuRip to Epson 4800. And then we're gonna go, this is something I learned from Jack over at Jurassic Prints. I did not know you could do this, but you come to define driver, you hit custom and boom, it reforms it to the outline. So this is everything we need there. Now we're gonna go to output instead of composite, under mode, we're gonna to go to separations. We don't wanna print any of the process colors. Uh, we're basically just gonna be printing these four. Now I'm gonna start with my uh, lemon yellow, which is gonna be our white base. Remember I filled it with that. So we're gonna hit print and see what that looks like. So this is our, our black screen. And you can see where the 30% opacity is right here. See it converted to a half tone, but then everything else, which was just filled with 100% spot black, all filled in there. This is the uh, off-white. So you got to imagine that would be printing in off-white. And then when we print the black over the top of it, you can see right here where the halftones is laying on top of it, 
that would just give or create the effect of a darker tan right here. All right, and before we wrap this video up, I do want to know any tricks or tips that you figured out that maybe I didn't share in this particular video because I love learning new shit. And with Adobe Illustrator, it's incredible because there are so many ways to do it. I'm always looking for the most efficient way. So let me know in the comments. Make sure to punch the thumbs up or you can punch the thumbs down. Don't give a shit. Drop into the comments. Let me know what you think. And above all, make sure to subscribe and then ding the bell so that you get notified when I upload another video. You know you're the best, Print Fam. We'll see you on the next one. Peace out.